Good evening, brothers and sisters. So happy to be back to share the word of the Lord. So last week was my birthday. So grateful to God for allowing me to be alive for 40 years. So thank God for that. And I will begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, and we're so grateful for this day. We're grateful for this year, Father God, 2023, my Lord. Father God, I just thank you, Father God, that you renew us, that you revive us with your good and precious word, that your Holy Spirit, Father God, will join us and be with us. Father God, as we speak of your goodness and your faithfulness, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So today we'll be speaking about God's goodness, mercy, and gratefulness but specifically i'm going to be talking about god holding us in his hands and it's just so amazing you know as we go through trials and we go through tribulations and you know 2023 i'm don't know about you know everybody and stuff like that but you know for some people it has been you know um beginning of things that I guess you know we never expect things to happen we always expect for things to be like smooth and you know sometimes that's not the way it is and you know even though that's what we want but sometimes God allows things in our lives so God just wants to remind us that no matter what we're going through God is holding us in his hands and then the first verse I will be talking about today is Isaiah 45 1 Isaiah 45 1 says thus saith the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus whose right hand I have held to subdue nations before him and to lose the armor of the kings to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not shut I will go before you and make the crooked path straight I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut off the bars I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, that you may know that I, the Lord, who called you by name, I am the God of Jacob, I am the God of Israel, for Jacob's my servant's sake, and Israel my elect. I have even called you by name. I have named you, though you have not known me. I am the Lord, and besides me there is no other. So right there, God is starting off with a being because he is saying, thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held. So as we, you know, read the scripture, then we try to understand and just be encouraged by what God has to say to us, because to be honest, there's no other reason or anything else that will keep us strong to continue to go on to the next day. So for me, I always look for God to for God to um, sorry I'm highlighting Um, I'm always looking for God to encourage me so when I read the Bible I'm always just clinging to the Word of God because clinging to the Word of God is what helps me to have hope to helps me to have faith to believe, to have peace, to move on to the next day. So when God was showing me that this is what he wanted me to talk about, about God's hand and about God's goodness and about what it means to us to be in his hands. And then right there in uh, 45.1, the Lord is saying, why Why is he doing this? Why? Why is he... What does he get out of holding our right hand or why is he doing this and why is he keeping us but then the lord goes on to explain why it says to subdue nations before them to lose the armor of the kings to open him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut i will go before you i will make the crooked path straight i will break in pieces the gates of iron cut the bars of iron i will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches that you may know that I am the Lord who calls you by name and the God of Israel. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and my in Israel, my elect, I even called you by your name. 
I have known you, though you have not known me. And I just love that because, to be honest, we don't deserve God to do anything for us. And what the scripture talks about is just because we have known him. And not even because we have known him, but because he knew us before time that he is saying that I have known you by name. So even though we were far off, we were, you know, doing our own thing far, far away from the Lord and didn't know him, didn't honor him with our bodies, with our minds, with our soul. But how beautiful it is that even though when we feel alone, we feel like nobody understands us, we feel like excluded, we feel, you know, just like we're walking through this world alone, God reminds us that it is not true that he has known us by name, even since we were in the womb. So that is so encouraging to know that we are not going through this alone through this walk of life and matthew 22 44 says thus saith the lord to my lord sit at my right hand until i put your enemies under your feet so here again god is saying because you're on my side anybody that comes against you your enemies are my enemies and god is saying sit at my right hand so there again god is saying sit at my right hand and we know that it could either be like sitting on his right hand, which is, this is my right hand. So sitting, like literally sitting or sitting, resting in his hand, because the Bible says that we are in the palms of his hand, but saying, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies, and until I put your enemies under your feet. The same thing when we were reading here in 45 1 it says i will break in pieces the gates of iron and cut the bars of iron i will give you the treasure the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of the secret places that you may know that i am the lord who calls you by name so here god keeps on repeating that he is for us and he will make everything straight according to his good and perfect plan and i know that we're starting off a new year 2023 and we want the year to be smooth to be perfect to be without chaos to be without drama and problems but yet god is in strengthening and in, in strengthening us and encouraging us to continue to fight the good fight of faith and that we are not alone and that no matter what we face god has a victory over all of our problems and over everything that that we face and even though 2023 isn't like it's really january 20 i think it's january 20th it is january january 22nd today <clears throat> so no matter what it's a year that i have seen in my life you know, in this new year, I have things that, you know, hard things. I've seen hard things that, you know, painful things, you know, with people that I love and I care about. And we just don't know what the Lord is doing. And, you know, it doesn't make sense. And sometimes you don't understand, but it doesn't really matter because we have to trust that it is for our good. And new is always scary. You know, we always pray, we always pray that, you know, the, that God is doing a new thing. And in that new thing that God is doing, we want it to be a new and easy thing. But yet when God shakes up and rattles everything and it's not the way that we want it, the new thing, like, you know, we, you know, we know the scripture that says, behold, I am new, you know, behold, I am doing a new thing you know, to forget the former things and the things of old. And, and, you know, we want it to be the way that we have made the scenario in our minds. And when God is like, yeah, well, you want the new thing. So let me do the new thing. But the new thing doesn't look familiar. It doesn't look the same. It actually looks like the opposite. But no matter what, we have to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. And just to God wants to remember us, to rem to remind us then to encourage us that no matter what we face, we are in the palm of his hands and he will guide us and he will lead us in the way that we should go. So we need to be like good 
children to your parents when your parents try to grab your hand and your parents try to tell you no don't cross the street by yourself because it's dangerous you're a child you don't know about the red light you don't know about the cars you don't you're not vigilant like your parents are and then that's how god wants us to be this year god wants us to really really hold on to him ask him for guidance ask him for with uh um for wisdom and not to do things on our own, but to continuously be looking for Papa's right hand to lead us in the way that we should go. Because yes, like me, I just turned 40 and like in numbers, it looks like, you know, you're 40. Wow, you know, you're older, wiser, um, wisdom and you know, blah, blah, blah. But to be honest, I don't feel any of those things. I don't feel older. I don't feel wiser. I don't feel anything. I feel more than ever before as a child, as a child to my father. And I don't want to do anything. And I don't want to go anywhere where God is not at. I continuously seek him for everything, for basic things. I'm always calling on to the Lord to help me because I don't know. That's the truth. I don't know what's good for me. I don't know which way I should go, but God is so good that he tells us, you know, not to worry that we are um, in the palm of his hands and that he will hold us and he will uplift us with his righteous right hand and thank God that he is righteous and we are not. We are working on it and thank god that through his grace we get to experience you know god and the holy spirit and jesus because if if it wasn't for that grace you know we wouldn't even be able to you know talk to the father so thank god for jesus because we're able to come boldly to the throne where we can find mercy in time of trouble um and the next scripture is going to be isaiah 41 13. Isaiah 41 13 says, For I, the Lord God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, warm Jacob. You men of Israel, I will help you, saith the Lord, and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Be- and then after, okay, so I want to stop right there. So the Lord is saying, I will hold your right hand. I'm saying to you, do not fear. I will help you. Fear not, warm of Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I love that because God comes to continuously remind us not to be scared because has, you know, has people not knowing anything because, you know, we're not God. As people not knowing anything, we worry because we don't know the future. We don't know where we're going. We worry about our job. We worry about our car, families, and all these things and the dreams that we want. And is the time running out? Is the time running out? Is the time running out? And we're always like going in our minds, like worrying, worrying about different things. And you know, you one thing gets fixed, and then you're worrying about the next thing, and that thing gets fixed, and then you move on to something else. But the Lord God doesn't want us to live like that. This 2023, He doesn't want us to live by worry he wants us to live by trusting him because he's a good God and because we have to trust him that everything that he allows is for our own good because he is good and then God says and your Redeemer the Holy One of Israel in verse 14 your Redeemer means that he's able to redeem what has gone by what has passed you know, the pain that we have lived through. He's able to redeem, you know, your relationship with your family members that has always been not smooth. He's able to redeem it and thank God that, you know, and even if it seems like it's a wasted, wasted time, God is able to redeem that, you know, and for women, sometimes there's a lot of pressure that you need to do these things, that you need to be married by a certain age or that you always need to be beautiful and that uh, you need to have kids by this certain age and, and that you need to do, uh, you know, be successful, have a nice body and like all these things that the world 
world is always trying to tell us that we need to be. But thank God that we don't live by those standards. Thank God that God, the Redeemer, the one that matters, is able to redeem what has been lost, what has been stolen, what has been, even if it's time, God is able to redeem that time, that time, that time that we've been waiting, that time that we've been sowing and not in money, but sowing in tears. Because a lot of the times, you know, the preachers will tell you that what opens the door for or the ear of God is money and it couldn't be further from the truth. That is not what opens the ear of God to answering prayers. It is your heart towards the Lord because you can have a rotten heart and be bringing tithes and offering and, and God's eyes is nothing. It means nothing because God is looking for a person that has a good heart towards God, a person that loves the Lord with all their heart, that we pursue him and we seek him, even though we're far from being perfect. But, you know, we try every day to please him. But then I love what it says in verse 15. It says, Behold, I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. You shall thresh the mountain and beat them small and make the hills like shaft. You shall winnow them. The wind shall carry them away and the whirlwind shall scatter them. And you shall rejoice in the Lord and the glory in the Holy One of Israel. Sometimes we wonder why do we need to go through these things? Why do we need to go through pain? Why do we need to go through uh, God will put us in so many seasons of just waiting, waiting for this, waiting for that. Don't say anything about this. Don't say anything about that. Just wait. Don't say anything. And it's just like, oh my goodness, because God is working also in our patience. And then, but in our patience, you know, at first it was so hard for me because I was very like, I need to say something. I need to say something. This is me in the world and I need to stand up and I need to say something and I needed to say something about everything. And then after that, I would just remember like sometimes when I saw something at work that wasn't right, I would go in, I would speak to the manager and I'd be like, oh, this person did this or this person is not doing their job or whatever. And then I, in my heart, I felt like I didn't accomplish anything because the managers did nothing about it. They just let everything continue to be the same. So it's like, it doesn't make sense. They call for meetings, they do this and they do that. And they wanna talk to the people about what's going on. Or it's supposed to be, they say that they wanna know what's going on. But yet when you talk to them about things that are going on, it, they do it and they do nothing about it. And you just feel like such a wasted time. So God showed me you do not say anything about anything. You do not complain about anything to anyone. You pray about it and let me take care of it. So now for years when I see something, I wanna like, I wanna say something, but then I'm like, oh no, I can't say anything. God is gonna take care of it. And I have learned, I have learned through quietness that the Lord will do what he told me that he was gonna do what he told me that he was going to do and he has always kept his word when god says be quiet don't say anything i will take care of it it's taken care of like that or when he tells me don't worry about that person i will scatter them he scatters them right here i would just remind it because right here in number 16 41 16 it says you shall winnow them and the wind shall carry them away and the world wind shall scatter them you shall rejoice in the Lord and the glory in the Holy One of Israel. And I can attest that that is so true, that the Lord will scatter them. I have seen people that have been enemies of the cross that have made my life really, really hard. And the Lord has told me to be still and not to say anything, that he was going to scatter them away. And I have seen it. I have seen it happen one by one by one by one until they're scattered and then it says right here and you shall rejoice in the lord thank god for removing those peoples from your life thank god for god removing the absolutes thank god for removing the jezebels and all those spirits that try to come against the spirit of god because they cannot stand the holy spirit 
So thank God for that. And then um, let's see. I'm in the next scripture is going to be Psalm 63, 8. The reason why I was why I brought that up is because the Bible says that you shall you know you shall make them with like sharp teeth. So in these times that we're going through things and that we're choosing to trust in the Lord, that's what God is doing. He's sharpening our spirit, man. And spiritually, we're getting sharp teeth, we're getting sharp sledge, and we're getting sharp swords in the spirit. So in those times that we're waiting on God, it's not a waste of time. It is a time that we are going through a season of God working in our lives to accomplish what he needs in our lives. So nothing is ever wasted. Psalm 63, it says, my soul follows closely behind you. Your right hand upholds me. And you know, when we're going through things, it's easy to forget about the Lord and just to be distracted with our phones or with watching TV and binge eating and binge watching TV because we forget about our problems momentarily. But yet the psalmist says that what we are to do is saying, give me one second. It says, 63.8, it says, My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. So right there, that's what we are supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be following closely behind the Lord. Because only His right hand can uphold us. You know, we're just so grateful to the Lord that God responds to a um, to a heart that's after his heart. I'm so grateful that I can call on the Lord. I'm so grateful that I can pray to him and that he can help me and that he can deliver me from all my distress and all my problems because I wouldn't be able to make it without him, to be honest. I don't know how people that don't know the Lord are able to carry on with their life because it's not easy. The next scripture is going to be 40, Isaiah, I, 40, Isaiah 46, 4. And Isaiah 46, 4 says, Even to your old age, I am he, and even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and deliver you. And I love that so much because it's saying, I, even to your old age, I am he. And even to your gray hairs, I will carry you. What a commitment from God to us that is. From the wound to your gray hairs. That's a promise right there. That's so beautiful. It says, I have made and I will bear. So God is saying, I have made you, I will carry you. Even I will carry and deliver you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For having that kind of love for us like nobody else could ever have. But the Lord always wants us to remember like I was saying uh, when I, we started, you know, uh, listening to to um, God's word, you know, sometimes when we're going through different difficult seasons, difficult season, and we feel alone and we feel like nobody understands, God is so faithful to remind us that even us, even though you know some people experience um, lack of love from their parents and sometimes you think you know why was I even here if I wasn't going to be loved but thank God 
because he loved us and he thought that you know we were good to be born and uh isaiah 49 14 it says but zion said the lord has forsaken me and my lord has forgotten me can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb surely they may forget yet i will not forget you see i have inscribed you on the palm of my hand your walls are continually before me so it's like we say to the lord lord you have forgotten me because we feel alone alone god you have forsaken me but then the lord answers can a woman forget her nursing child how can a mom that just gave birth forget her baby that needs food it says how can i forget can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb it says surely they will forget yet i will not forget it says see i have inscribed you on the palm of my hands your walls are continually continually before me and that was the, the message that the Lord had for today to encourage us of his loving kindness and that we are not alone, that God's love is with us, that God's love is for us. And His our names are inscribed on the palm of his hands and that he will not forget us and that he will not leave us alone. And God wanted to remind us that even though it seems like things are out of control even though it seems like god is not aware of what we're going through even though it seems like a lonely path like god why is all these commotions why is all these stressors why is all this happening my god and then you feel like you're alone because we can't control it but yet the lord is saying like you are perfectly where you need to be and don't worry you're not gonna fall i'm not gonna let you go you are where you need to be trust me so the lord wants us to trust him that he is in control and that he will not leave us and that we are perfectly where we need to be and thank the lord for that so that was the word that god had today i love you i will close out in prayer heavenly father in the mighty name of jesus i come before you lord and i thank you so much my god for speaking to your people father god i thank you that you love us my god with an ever-ending love my god help us father god to understand your love for us father god help us to understand how crazy 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 you're not crazy but the love that you have for us is just so crazy and so loving it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense father god how you have created your elect father god and you have put up father god with us doing horrible horrible abominations father god yeah you remembered us and called us back to you my lord how can how can we ever deserve it we just thank you my lord for allowing us to understand and to hear and to receive father god i i receive it and and for me and my family and for all the viewers father god i receive it father god that you said that nothing father god will will happen to us father god i receive it that you said father god that our enemies will not overtake us father god i, I receive it that you said that your that your eyes and your hands are always before us father god i just thank you my god for being with us i thank you for this day i thank you for your anointing father god that breaks the yoke we love you we worship you and we thank you in jesus mighty name we pray amen bye see you guys next next week have a blessed week in jesus name we pray amen bye